Hello, I'm Ted Goins, President of Lutheran Services Carolinas. Back in 2014, we started doing what we lovingly call our Tour de LSC. And now in 2023, we're still doing our Tour de LSC. We started doing this years ago because um, it, it, we had just gotten so big, and this was in 2014, we've got a lot bigger since. But in 2014, we had gotten so big that I just didn't feel like I could get out and see everybody as often as I could and to know everybody like I would like to. So at least uh, then in the in the spring of each year, I've tried to get out to all of our facilities and all of our offices and just share kind of a state of LSC. So that's what I've done just finished this year, 2020, 20, uh, 2023. And, uh, and uh, but many people can't come to, to that event Usually we try to have a staff meeting and 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 share a little State of the Union uh, address with all of you. But uh, obviously uh, everybody's got jobs and we've got second and third shift people that can't always be there. Uh, and so we just decided that we would tape it this year and see how this works. So I'm going to run through our presentation. Uh, and uh, that way, uh, those of you that were not able to attend in person, hopefully will be able to watch this online uh, if you need some help falling asleep at night. So I'm just going to run through our brief slide presentation. I'm going to do it very quickly because I know um, how hard it is to stay focused uh, when you're doing something like this along the way. I always like to start with our uh, mission and vision and values. Uh, because that's our secret sauce that really makes this place happen. You're not working for one person. Uh, you're working for an organization. Now, we're a faith-based organization, uh, but you don't have to be Christian uh, or Lutheran uh, Christian to be uh, uh, served or to work for Lutheran Services Carolinas, but we are unapologetically a faith-based organization, uh, and folk, folks of all faiths have felt comfortable working in our environment because we are open to all people uh, and uh, and all are welcome within Lutheran Services Carolinas. So our mission, uh, simply empowered by Christ, we walk together with all we serve. And then our vision statement, uh, again, uh, biblically, uh, because that's who we are, uh, where we were started, is from John 10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We want abundant living for everybody that we serve, and that includes each one of us, you. Uh, also want to share with you our uh, values, uh, and I've always remembered these as Fire CC, and then we added a J just a couple years ago. Faith, integrity, respect, excellence, compassion, collaboration, and justice. And you know, if, if we just stay focused on those values and that mission and vision every day, it's hard to believe we, we would go wrong. I did want to talk a little bit more about justice because we just added that one in the last couple of years. Uh, really, after the George Floyd murder, uh, when people started asking, it was LSC, was I going to say something about uh, kind of some of these diversity, um, equity, and inclusion issues that were really happening all over the country? Well, we've had a long history of, um, of baking diversity uh, into our faith, integrity, respect, excellence, all those values, and into our vision and mission. But there comes a time when you can't just walk the walk, you need to talk the talk. Uh, and, and we've not done that. I've, we've always tried to, you know, they'll know we're Christians by our love, but we really felt like we really needed to make a statement. And so, again, just like when we developed all these values with everybody in the organization involved, we reached out and said, what do you think should that value be around diversity, equity, and inclusion? And we chose to frame it again, because we are a faith-based organization, around um, justice and, and really using the biblical definition of justice, uh, which is to be in a right relationship with God and be in a right, right relationship with each other. So that's our big holistic view of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's held us in good stead, and I, I, I hope that each of you uh, will embrace that uh, also as one of our uh, as one of our core values. If we had a, an eighth value, I think it would be around fun, because we like to have fun. And if you can't have fun in your job, then it's it's just a job. It's not uh, it's not a vocation. Uh, so I did throw a few pictures in here just to show you some of the fun around this organization, whether it's from refugee work, uh, disaster preparedness, 
our senior services, uh, all the different things that we do and all the smiles that come uh, with all the work that you do all over this organization, including our loyal service award winners that you see there uh, and, uh, and, and all the different ways that we serve and all the fun that we have. Uh, the next uh, uh, series, just two slides that I just wanted to share with you briefly, again, uh, not getting into too much detail, uh, but about uh, about uh, all the different people that we serve across this organization. You know, we do so much from uh, adoptions and foster care to nursing homes. So we, we cover the gamut wherever the need is greatest across the Carolinas. But just a couple of quick numbers. We provided over 427,000 days of care last year in our senior services uh, communities. Uh, we served over 3,600 people in our child and family services. Uh, so just a tremendous amount of care and service that's provided. But you know, the numbers aren't everything. For instance, we only served seven families that were assisting, that were, that were looking at pursuing private adoption. But imagine the change that you are making uh, in, in somebody's life, uh, in that family's life and in that child, that adopted child's life for the rest of their life and generations to come. So while the numbers are small, your impact is just, is just tremendous across uh, all these people that we serve and for generations to come. So just think of that um, um, uh, when, you're, uh, when you're serving. Also with our veterans, you know, we only serve 13 veterans, but these are people that gave their health for our country, for us, uh, and to be able to give back to them, even in small numbers, uh, just think of the impact that you are making in their life every day. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the almost 16,000 volunteer hours. We couldn't do this without them, or the 4,700 advocates that are willing to pick up the phone and call the governor or their congressman uh, when we need them to, when uh, when when we need to get the word out about reimbursement or regulatory issues, and then of almost 3,000 donors. Again, we could not do this without our donors. Oops, I went too far. And this slide is the really the same slide, just with the the size of the font equals the size of revenue of each program. And again, this was just a visual to, to be able to show you um, uh, what all we um, what all we do and you see all the different programs that we that we're involved in and then how big they are as far as revenue. Now revenue is not everything. Think back to that adopted child. Small numbers, that's the smallest, I think, yeah, right here. That's the smallest uh, adoptions, the smallest font on here is our smallest program, but with huge impact. But then our largest program, obviously, is skilled nursing facilities. We now have nine skilled nursing facilities across the uh, across the state uh, of North Carolina, and uh, and so that's where a lot of our revenue comes from um, in, in this organization. Uh, I always like to share our financials. Matter of fact, that was one of the reasons for doing this tour this time of year, is so I could share the financials. And very briefly, just wanted to run through these with you because I think it's important that you know who you work for and and uh, and that's that vision mission and values and uh, and also what our financial condition is whether it's good bad or indifferent we had probably the best year on paper we've ever had now there's a few asterisks that I'll explain um but uh, but we had just to to give you the numbers uh, uh and this is uh, our audited financials so these have been audited by our independent external auditors uh almost $136 million in revenue on the senior side. This year, about $128 million in expense. So we had over $7 million in operating income. That's the biggest number we've ever reported. I'll give you the asterisk in a minute. And then about half a million dollars uh, in unrestricted contributions that we can use for whatever we need uh, uh, most. And then on the child and family side, we had uh, a, a, about a normal year, we had about 28. Eight million dollars in um, in uh, revenue. We had a little over eight million in expenses, so we lost about a half a million dollars. Now everything we do on the child and family side is government funded, therefore government underfunded, and so we know that we're going to lose money every year from operations. 
but we have to um, depend on our donors and uh, and other sources of income uh, to make up the difference. And thankfully, each year we've been able to do that. And so, for instance, this year we had about uh, almost a million dollars in unrestricted contributions. So we can use about half of that to cover that loss uh, from uh, from operations uh, on the on the child and family side. Uh, back to the senior side for just a minute to let you know where that money, um, where that excess money can be used. Now, we have um, the reason we had such a big number this year, uh, which is more than more than usual, is because the, the really the federal government gave us more money for COVID uh, that that is now ended. So we don't get any more of that. But they basically said you, you got to make this money last a long time. So it lasts past the end of the fiscal year, but we're going to have to use that money over the next couple of years because, as you well know, COVID is not over in Health and Human Services. Uh, we're still having people test positive. We're having to go through all the uh, hoops that that come with that um, and, and and care for our residents and clients and our um, and our staff, our teammates. So that money has to last a long time. The other thing is capital expenditures are not included in our operating budget. So to continue to do renovations, and you know, we have these huge buildings that get 24 hour abuse. So we have to, we have to um, keep them up. We wanna keep all of our buildings looking good. Again, that's part of abundant living. So we have to keep those buildings up and that takes lots of money. Matter of fact, we're just finishing up a couple million dollar renovation at Trinity Oaks Health and Rehab right now, which was built in 1976. It's an old building uh, and it takes lots of, um, uh, lots of money to keep that up. Uh, and we just finished a big renovation down at uh, at Trinity Place in uh, in uh, Albemarle, uh, a couple million dollars. So you see that money does not last long when you're putting a half a million dollar roof on a building or replacing 50 and $60,000 vans and $50,000 or more hot water heaters uh, in our buildings. Uh, those numbers pile up pretty quick. So that's what happens with any money that's left over at the end of the year. The good thing is it doesn't go into an owner's pocket, anybody's pocket. It goes right back into serving uh, our uh, our residents and clients. And that's what I love. Um, uh, one of the things I love about working for a nonprofit uh, like Lutheran Services. And again, um, I won't go into a lot of detail here, but I just wanted to tell you that in spite of COVID, and in spite of all the headwinds with workforce and all the issues that we face in uh, reimbursement in uh, health and human services, we actually made tremendous progress this year. Um, we, um, um, we, um, uh, I had slipped another slide in on you again. Uh, we opened a recovery cottage and a recovery program down in South Carolina. We opened our new Trinity Landing uh, down in uh, Wilmington, uh, uh, a retirement center, uh, which is a absolutely beautiful place. We've already got over 270 residents living there, and we're not even full yet, but we're, we're we, we've almost got it filled up already. Uh, we expanded our new Americans program to serve refugees now in Salisbury, North Carolina, and in Myrtle Beach. We've already got refugees coming into Myrtle Beach, uh, and we're getting ready to start them into Salisbury. So we're just um, continuing to grow. Uh, in that important work also. Uh, and uh, uh, we've started uh, serving uh, Ukrainian refugees. We sent a team over to Bethlehem uh, over in Palestine uh, to uh, to help with uh, dementia training for people over there. So we're now not just Lutheran Services Carolinas. How about Lutheran Services worldwide, uh, at least in that situation? So happy to help any way and every way that we can. Uh, our PACE programs are growing tremendously. Uh, we're now partners in four different PACE programs, and all four of them are growing tremendously. And then lastly, I just wanted to share welcome to the team, to Glen Flora uh, and to Aston Park. Two new nursing homes joined. Uh, these are nonprofit uh, community nursing homes, Glen Flora down in Lumberton and Aston Park in, uh, in Asheville who joined Lutheran Services um, because they just knew that they could not continue to do this work by themselves, but that we could be stronger together. So they joined Lutheran Services. So next year, these numbers will be any, even bigger uh, because we will be serving more people uh, again across, uh, across the state. And then lastly, uh, to share uh, just a little bit of the future, what's coming next? 
Uh, we will spend more of our time on advocacy, uh, just trying to get the reimbursement and the regulations that will help us to do our jobs uh, best across everything that we do. You know, we're all leaders uh, and we want to do more leadership development for each and every one of us, because when you walk into a resident room or a client's room or a client's house, uh, you are a leader. You're leading on behalf of Lutheran Services Carolinas. I'm usually not there. Uh, you're the leader. And, uh, and we want to continue to make all of us better leaders uh, to do this work. We want to completely fill up Trinity Landing uh, down at Wilmington. Uh, and, and we're well on our way to doing that. Um, uh, we want to continue to grow and stabilize our New Americans program, uh, grow our foster care uh, across the st uh, both states. Uh, we hope to, to start another independent living. It, it won't be quite on the grand scale of, of Wilmington, but we're going to build about 72 rental retirement apartments in Hickory, and we hope to get that underway just real soon now. Uh, we want to grow our host home programs where we're helping uh, uh, place uh, folks with developmental disabilities in homes, kind of like foster care, except for people with developmental disabilities. That program is growing, and, and I just love the model. It's so much better than having a person uh, institutionalized or uh, in a group home uh, for folks that can live in that home environment. We still got to do renovations. We got to keep up all those group, uh, you know, our, our group homes and our our healthcare facilities because we want them to look good any, each and every day. And I'm sure we'll have growth opportunities uh, in the future. Um, we we always do, and we just have to find the right ones for us uh, as an organization and continue to grow so that we can continue to do this good work across uh, both Carolinas. Now the uh, good for um, uh, good for you. We're done. Uh, bad. We can't ask questions because I'm on video this time, and I'm sorry that we're not able to uh, uh, to do that. But you know where I'm at, so you know how to get to me either through your supervisor or through our website. And uh, but I'm, I'm always willing to try to answer any question that you might have. But I just wanted to thank you for everything that you do for us across Lutheran Services. Uh, uh, God bless you, and we will see you uh, hopefully on the tour to LSC in 2024. Thank you.